Hello my friends, welcome back to Ink and Fig. My name is Alex and today we are doing my 2022 book bracket. I mentioned in my last video that figuring out my favorite book of 2022 was going to be almost impossible because I had so many absolute bangers this year. So I decided to do something a little bit different. Now classic book brackets are gonna match up one month against another, sort of January versus February and so on and so forth. But for me, that's never really worked because inevitably I will have like three absolute bangers in March and then like October is gonna be full of duds. You just really never know how it's gonna pan out. And that's exactly what happened with me. I had a couple of months where I could pick from any number of books and they would all have been my favorite of the month. And then in July, for instance, every single one of the four books I read was just an absolute flop. So instead I decided I'm gonna throw my list of 48 books into a randomizer and I'm going to use that randomized list to pit all of these books against each other in one big all out brawl to figure out what my favorite book of 2022 was. So without further ado, we have a lot of books to get through. So let's get going. Okay, so the first pair of books that we are pitting up against each other are Earthlings by Sayaka Murata and Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. There is absolutely a clear winner here, and that is Earthlings. It was by and far just the better read. Although Norse Mythology was fun, Earthlings had the quality behind it to back it up. Our next two books are Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo and Nona the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. Again, this one is a knockout win by Nona the Ninth. Shadow and Bone just could not hold a candle to the level of writing in Nona. Perfect on Paper by Sofia Gonzalez and Ruin and Rising by Lee Bardugo. This one was kind of a tougher pit because both of these books were kind of just eh for me and I didn't really get much value out of either of them. That said, what led to an overall more valuable experience for me was Ruin and Rising because it helped me finish the Shadow and Bone series. So for that reason, Ruin and Rising wins this one. Our next two are a very interesting pair. We have Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar and The Umbrella Academy Volume 1 Weltuntergang Suite the German edition. Both of these were very valuable to me for different reasons, but overall I just really didn't like the comic version of the Umbrella Academy at all, so Felix Ever After wins this one. Next up we have Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry and Luster by Raven Leilani. These two both gave me a lot of value. Legends and Lattes was such a comforting read, and frankly I think Luster by Raven Leilani should be a modern classic. That book hit every single mark for me, but overall, I think Legends and Lattes just had more of an impact on me in terms of showing me what I needed at the time when I was reading it. So Legends and Lattes wins this matchup. Okay, so now we have The Umbrella Academy Volume 1 in English, and we have You Are the Medicine by Asha Frost. Once again, did not like the Umbrella Academy at all, and I haven't been able to stop talking about how You Are the Medicine truly helped me in my mental health journey, so You Are the Medicine is winning this match. Our next matchup is one of the hard ones. So this one, <laughs> this one is If I Had Your Face by Francis Shaw, which in June I labeled as potentially my favorite book of the year, and Medicine Walk by Richard Wagamese. Now, if you've watched either of my last two videos, you will know that Medicine Walk hit me very deeply on a personal level, so that one is also way up there for contender for best book of the year. So now I have to choose between them. When I come up against a challenge like this, where I have two that are very, very close together, I have to think about if I were holding both of them and I had to pick one of them to reread, which one would it be? So for that reason, this one is gonna be If I Had Your Face. Now this one is an interesting matchup for exactly the opposite reason, because I kind of didn't like either of these. This one is The Umbrella Academy Volume 2, Dallas and The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. Both of these were like, just okay. Like a solid three-ish stars. You know, nothing necessarily special about either of them. Now I'm going to choose The Silent Patient for this one because the ending, I managed to avoid spoilers somehow and I was actually shocked by the ending. So regardless of how good I thought the book was, the shock factor was quite fulfilling for me. So we're going with The Silent Patient. Next up is like the weirdest pit I have ever seen. For this one, we have Manhunt by Gretchen Felker Martin and The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. 
this matchup is wild because again, I feel like I liked them both the same. In terms of sheer impact though, I think I have to choose Manhunt because it was so timely and it came out of such a current place of rage in terms of the whole JKR situation and all of that, that like this just absolutely hit the nail on the head in terms of what was needed from a horror book right now. Okay, this one is kind of no contest. We have Accept the Dying by Maureen Jennings and Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Time and time again, I mentioned that Six of Crows is one of my favorites of all time. Um, and Except the Dying was not nearly as good as I remembered it being the first time I read it, so Six of Crows takes this one for sure. So the next one here, we have All Systems Read by Martha Wells and The Man Who Died Twice by Richard Oseman. Now, The Man Who Died Twice by Richard Oseman actually made me cry, so regardless of how much I enjoyed All Systems Read, I gotta go with The Man Who Died Twice. Our next one, also no contest, we've got Embers by Richard Wagamese and A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I really don't think that V.E. Schwab is for me. This one was an absolute dud. I was so glad to be done with it and I am not continuing that series. We're absolutely going with Embers. Uh, the, these ones are making the decisions really easy for me. So the next one I have is The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow and The Memory Librarian by Janelle Monet et al. So there's five other authors that contributed to that book. I cannot remember all of their names off the top of my head and I don't really want to go grab it, but please just bear with me. Uh, we are choosing by a long shot The Memory Librarian because The Once and Future Witches took me over a year to read um, because I DNF'd it last year in 2021. And like, I'm, no. Okay, so next we have Kim Ji Young, born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju, and we have Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. Both of these were very interesting books, but Kim Ji Young, born 1982, made me feel a lot of emotions. And I also thought that it was very clever that we created a narrative around a statistically typical person who doesn't exist and yet exists in its entirety. Like it was very cool. Kim Ji Young wins this one. We have The Handmaid's Tale graphic novel written by Margaret Atwood and illustrated by Renee Nolt. And we have This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Matar and Max Gladstone. It, it's, this is how you lose the time war. That book, like, so good. All right, so next we have The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner and The Poetic Edda, which I think might take the cake for the weirdest matchup of this whole thing, but what can you do? Interestingly enough, as much as I was sort of ragging on The Lost Apothecary and I still don't have fond memories of it, and technically it did rate higher than The Poetic Edda, The Poetic Edda was in and of itself at this point in time more of an academic text, so that doesn't really make the list. So The Lost Apothecary, oddly enough, is gonna win this matchup. Next we have Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo and Phantasmagoria and Other Poems by C.S. Lewis. That poetry collection just like messed me up in a lot of ways, mostly that I just couldn't stop being mad at the poet not really saying anything. Uh, so we're going with Crooked Kingdom for that and the reason that it's also one of my favorite books of all time. All right, next we are moving into Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo. Guess who my favorite author was this year? <laughs> and The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. The Shadow and Bone series in and of itself was like kind of boring and the th of the three of them, Siege and Storm was the most boring, despite the fact that we got Nikolai out of it. That said, if you have not read The Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin, it is absolutely fantastic and the obelisk gate while being a lot different from the fifth season in terms of sort of form is very very good so i'm definitely going with the obelisk gate on this one all right so next we have mooncakes by suzanne walker and wendy Shu versus the last wish by andre sapkowski no we're going with mooncakes <laughs> The Edinburgh Dead by Brian Ruckley and Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown. Ruby Fruit Jungle, although I can recognize it as being a good book, was just not for me. And The Edinburgh Dead, while being very much up my street, was not a great book. So between the two of them, I am going to choose The Edinburgh Dead simply because I enjoyed it more. All right, so next we are going up with Gumbo Yaya by Oriel Marie and Karamo by Karamo Brown. These two books 
were so good, both of them. I loved them both. However, I think I'm going to go with Karamo on this one because it, it fulfilled me more in terms of um, the reading experience made me feel like I was having a conversation with someone and like poetry I'm still trying to get into as a genre like overall it's still not my favorite genre of things to read so although I have already recognized Gumbo Yaya as my favorite poetry book of the year I still would just prefer to read Karamo again because it just felt a little bit more personal and it just flowed better in my head. Next we are going up with Naturally Tan by Tan France versus It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. We're going with Naturally Tan for very reasons that do not need to be explained. We're going up with The Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno-Garcia versus The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace. The Gods of Jade and Shadow was fine, but I didn't really like it. And The Princess Saves Herself in this one, I actually identified with quite closely, so I'm going to be choosing The Princess Saves Herself in this one. And our last matchup in round one is Unlikely Sanctuary by Melissa King Hope versus The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. The Lottery at this point has kind of been done to death. I'm sure it was very nice and new and shiny back in the day, but now it's kind of lost its luster and I just don't really like it that much. Unlikely Sanctuary, however, was written by a local teenager and I thought that she did an absolutely bang up job over it. It's only gonna be a one volume manga, but you know, I enjoyed the ride. So we're choosing Unlikely Sanctuary. Fight. We've got Earthlings versus Nona the Ninth. For sheer readability, we are going for Nona the Ninth. Earthlings was a very traumatic read, and I'm not sure that I would necessarily go back to it quite so soon or possibly ever, just because it, it was a lot to deal with. Next, we have Ruin and Rising versus Felix Ever After. Felix Ever After was simply the better book between these two. Again, the Shadow and Bone series in and of itself was not that great. Felix Ever After, I did have some complaints with. Um, in terms of the narrative voice mostly, but it definitely beats out Ruin and Rising, so it gets to go into round three. Next, we are pitting up Legends and Lattes versus You Are the Medicine. Between the two of these, one of them, they both made me feel really good about myself and about life in general, but one of them gave me a lot more payoff, and that is You Are the Medicine. Okay, the next one is gonna be one of those no contests. It's going to be If I Had Your Face versus The Silent Patient, and because I didn't really like The Silent Patient that much, and I really liked If I Had Your Face, If I Had Your Face is moving into round three. Next up, we had Manhunt versus Six of Crows. Now, this one was also very difficult because I recognized that Manhunt is technically the more valuable piece of literature, but Six of Crows is one of my favorite books of all time. Like, I can't discount that. And again, between the sheer readability of these two, I'm gonna go with Six of Crows. Next, we have The Man Who Died Twice versus Embers. Again, I loved both of these, but if I had to pick a favorite, which I do, I think I'm gonna have to pick The Man Who Died Twice because it was just such a fun, juicy read, and I love that series so much. The Memory Librarian versus Kim Ji Youngborn 1982. This one's really tough because both of these are very, very good books, and I like them both. I think if I had to pick one that I enjoyed reading more, I think I'm gonna go with Kim Ji Youngborn 1982, because again, I just think that creating a person out of a statistical average was such a clever way to approach this story. Oh, another easy pick. This is how you lose the time war versus the lost apothecary. It is finally time to get rid of that one and we are going, this is how you lose the time war. Next, we are pitting up Crooked Kingdom versus the Obelisk Gate. I'm in kind of the same problem. I love Crooked Kingdom so much that like as good as the Obelisk Gate is, I think Crooked Kingdom's gonna take it. Like Obelisk Gate was not as good as the fifth season. And I think that's what's kind of helping weigh this is like, I know that the Obelisk Gate is not the best one in that series. So I don't think it can hold up to Crooked Kingdom. Crooked Kingdom's going into round three. 
Now we have Mooncakes versus the Edinburgh Dead. The Edinburgh Dead really wasn't that great. Mooncakes was just so much fun. So Mooncakes is gonna move on. All right, we got the Battle of the Fab Five. In this one, we've got Karamo versus Naturally Tan. Both of these were fabulous. I've got to choose one of them to move on. And frankly, I think I enjoyed Tan's book more just because I sort of like, I like his sort of flippant candidness about his personality and about his writing voice. And like Karamo was very um, deep into the mud, kind of pulling apart traumas and pathologies and stuff like that in his book. And so I just found Naturally Tan a little, like still quite serious in a lot of ways, but a bit more of a romp and I liked that. All right, now our last matchup for round two, we have the princess saves herself in this one versus Unlikely Sanctuary. Now, again, both of these were absolutely great, but I really identified with the, the Princess Saves Herself in this one, so that one's gonna have to move into round three. All right, now we find ourselves in round three, starting off with Nona the Ninth versus Felix Ever After are both very good. I can't pretend that they're not, but again, one of these I absolutely devoured and adored every second of, and the other one was almost a bit of a slog because of the writing style. So I'm gonna have to go with Nona the Ninth on this one. Next, we have You Are the Medicine versus If I Had Your Face. These two were both so good, but I think I have to go with If I Had Your Face. I just enjoyed reading it more, and if I were to pick up one of them to read again, it would be that one. Next, we have Six of Crows and The Man Who Died Twice. This is another one of those tough ones that I almost can't come up with an answer for, but if I had to choose one that I'm gonna read again, it's gonna be Six of Crows. Kim Ji Young, born 1982, versus This Is How You Lose the Time War. This Is How You Lose the Time War is so good. And Kim Ji Young, I think, is probably the cleverest book that I read. But like, this is how you lose the time war really moved me. So I think I have to go with this is how you lose the time war. All right, our next matchup is Crooked Kingdom versus Mooncakes. Mooncakes was pretty good, but it had a lot of issues to it. And Crooked Kingdom is still one of my favorites of all time. So Crooked Kingdom's moving on. All right, the last matchup of round three is Naturally Tan versus The Princess Saves Herself in this one. If I was gonna reread one of these, it would absolutely be Naturally Tan. It just had a lot more substance to it. So regardless of how much I identify with the poetry collection, it's gonna be Naturally Tan. We're getting down to it. Like this is where the really tough decisions are gonna have to be made. Like round three was already hard enough, but like this is gonna be wild. Starting off with Nona the Ninth and If I Had Your Face. I was sort of expecting these to come up against each other in the final. Like Nona flowed so well and it carries on one of my favorite series that I have been reading in the last couple of years. But if I had your face talked about some really timely issues and had some extremely relatable characters. If I was holding them both in my hands and I had to reread one of them, I would open Nona the Ninth. Okay, <laughs> we have Six of Crows versus This Is How You Lose the Time War. As much as I love Six of Crows, and I do love Six of Crows, This Is How You Lose the Time War was just so good. It The writing quality was so high that I honestly don't think Six of Crows can hold a candle to even though it's so good. Like it's still one of my favorite books of all time, but I think this is how you lose the time war is gonna take this one. The last one of round four, we have Crooked Kingdom versus Naturally Tan. As good as Naturally Tan was, Crooked Kingdom is gonna carry the Bardugo torch forward for this round into round five. We have our three finalists, which I'm going to rank rather than doing an elimination. So we have up at the top, Nona the Ninth, then This Is How You Lose the Time War, and then Crooked Kingdom. So these are the three that we are left with. Now I have to choose a favorite. I hate this. Okay, so these three books were all absolutely incredible. Crooked, interestingly enough, between the two of them, Crooked Kingdom and Six of Crows, I would rather reread Six of Crows every time. Like Crooked Kingdom was great, 
but I loved Six of Crows. So I think because I know that Crooked Kingdom is my least favorite of that duology, it's going to take third place. That leaves me with This Is How You Lose the Time War and Nona the Ninth. If you had asked me back in September, I think I would have said that This Is How You Lose the Time War, and I believe I did say that This Is How You Lose the Time War is gonna be my favorite read of 2022. But Nona was my second to last read of the year, and it was just so good. Like the writing in Nona was so on point and it flowed so well and everything in that world has just been so tantalizingly developed over the three books that currently exist in that series that like, it was just a glorious read. I ate that book up in like less than five days and I loved every second of it. It was, Almost, that whole series is what I would call perfect. Like it hits every single thing for me. I have no complaints. It's great. This is how you lose the time war. It's a standalone. It's the first thing I've ever read from either of them and the writing quality is just immaculate. I would love, 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 love to be able to write like that one day. Between the two of them, if I had to pick up both of them and choose one to read again, it would be Nona. My enjoyment of that book just cannot be understated. And like, this is how you lose the time war is a very artsy book. Like there's a lot of symbolism, a lot of stuff to sort of peel apart. And that's great, but it's almost more of a mental workout than just the sheer enjoyment I get out of Nona. Not to discount the significant philosophical stuff that Tamsin Mir is trying to accomplish with Gideon the Ninth. Like we've got some serious existential questions going on in that series. So like, it's also got a lot to pick apart, but just the enjoyment of it was so good that I'm gonna have to put This Is How You Lose the Time War in second place. And first place, my favorite book of 2022 is Nona the Ninth. So now that I've finally picked my favorite book of 2022, I think I can finally leave 2022 in the past. I'm so happy about that. We're gonna move on into 2023, satisfied with where we came from and excited for the future. Now, this whole year end year start series is going to continue with one more video wherein I'm going to tell you all of my 2023 reading goals and we're going to talk about how exactly I plan to accomplish those. We're going to pick out a couple of books that I would really like to read this year and that is going to be how we're going to launch ourselves into the meat of 2023. So thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so happy to have had you here. I'm so happy to have been with you for 2022. It's been a true pleasure. Pop down below and hit the uh, like button. Leave a comment if you feel so moved so that other people can come and find us and join the fun over here on Ink and Fig. And go and follow me on all my social media at Ink and Fig or on Instagram at Ink and Fig Reads. And if you have not yet, go and hit the little subscribe button and hit the bell so that you know when I upload because sometimes the algorithm does not tell you that information. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you in the next one. Bye.